All right, so we had a blowout jobs report, did we? And that the yield on the 10-year treasury has da -da 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 dropped. And rather significantly, it's now down to 1.46 when I just looked at it right now. So, <laughs> if the jobs report was so good, inflation is here, which we all agree, inflation is here. The jobs report is so good. Unemployment is low. What does that tell you? What would that tell you, my friends? That would tell you the Fed would do what? To stem the rise of inflation, they're going to raise the interest rates. Because high growth, high employment, inflation through the roof, high prices, the way you beat that back is with... Da -da 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 -da, you raise the interest rates to arrest some of that. To stop it. To stop inflation. To stop growth. To stop crazy job creation. So... If the Fed were about to raise interest rates, why would people be buying the 10-year Treasury to have the yields drop? The only reason the yields drop is because people are buying. So why is there such a demand for more bonds if the employment numbers are so good and the inflation is so high, which it is, that would indicate, and unemployment is so low, which it is, according to government numbers, that would indicate what? That would indicate the Fed raising rates to tamp down the inflation aspects. And yet, mind-bogglingly, they're not doing that. They're buying the bonds. They're buying the bonds. The rates are going down as we speak. Uh, look, I just did a quick viewpoint. I said, well, the bonds going to be getting killed because of the, the uh, jobs report was a blowout. But they're not. They're going the other way. I, I find that incredible, actually. And that tells me one thing and one thing only. This is a fake, fake numbers. I, <laughs> there's no way. I, I, you go back to Paul Volcker and Ronald Reagan and then 82. The way they beat inflation is a... See, everyone thinks it's because they raised rates that put the economy in recession to beat inflation. No, it was not. That was not it. What they did was, is they essentially, they, they uh, Carter liberalized some of the markets. We talked about transportation. Uh, Reagan got rid of the, uh, the union, air traffic controller union. They opened up trade. Uh, they liberalized stock uh, market, you know, trades. There was no more fixed commission, no more fixed price on airlines, no more fixed transportation costs. They just liberalized a lot of stuff which basically was an initially inflationary. Of course it was, just like what it was when they got rid of the, when they uh, got rid of the illegality of owning gold. Of course that made the price of gold jump through the roof initially because it was, it was basically kept below par value for so long by an outside force that the minute the outside force was removed, it, it jumped up. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's like kind of when you hold a balloon down, a helium balloon, the minute you let it go, it springs up. No different than that. Or spring push a spring down, and the minute you let it go, it jumps up. The same thing here. All right, so then they did that, and then uh, what happened? The liberalization took a while to kick in, and it did. And the lower plate prices, higher growth, lower inflation. And uh, it's very, very interesting, too. But everyone thinks, oh, it's because Volcker increased the interest rates, which, um, which hurt the economy, but put everything back on the even track. It did not do any of this sort, man. So now people think, well, if that's the case, i.e., uh, inflation is stemmed off by, inflation and high growth is stemmed off by higher interest rates, well, then inherently higher interest rates should be coming if we have high inflation, higher growth, and a higher job report. Now, as such, no one would want to own bonds. Because if you own bonds, at, you buy a 10 year bond at 1.6, and you expect the interest rates to go up, the price of your bond is going to go down. And you only begin 1.6 as the interest rate when the interest rates on those same bonds in a few short months, if not a year, will be much, much higher. Uh, the yield will be much, much higher than 1.6. This is why bonds go down as interest rates go up. I have a 1.6% bond right now. You got to be kidding me, dude. No way. Pay, you got you to you go, go, go. I got 1.6% bond right now. That's what the yields are. I pay 100 bucks for it. Next year, the federal government issues a bond that's paying 2%. So my hundred dollars bought 1.6 uh, a year previous. My hundred dollars now is buying two percent interest rates. 
inherently that same hundred dollars is worth more to buy a two percent interest rate than it is a 1.6 which means no one's going to buy that 1.6 percent bond for 100 bucks because that same 100 dollars can buy a two percent bond thus the price of the bond will drop but everything in equilibrium so no one's going to be buying bonds if they expect the Fed to raise rates. Which means no one's expecting the Fed to raise rates even though we had a quote blowout unquote uh, jobs report. Which means that the jobs numbers are are fake. I don't know. I mean, look, I would dive deep into it. What makes no sense? We have some kind of dichotomy here. Two completely different areas that say, okay, interest rates are going down while the economy is growing? That does not make sense. No one's going to be buying bonds in a stable, growing economy. So, uh, just guard your walls, my friends. I don't know what the other shoe's going to drop, but this is this is a short-term fakeness, if you ask me. Or else the rates would be going up, not down. I will right, we'll see you.